Hello, uh, welcome to the Jenkins online meetup. Today we have a um, discussion about uh, the DevOps World community agenda and call for papers. So DevOps World is one of uh, the biggest uh, events related to DevOps. Uh, it's a conference uh, which uh, this year happens online and free to attend for everyone. And there is a strong uh, community agenda there. Uh, the Jenkins project has been a part of this conference since the very beginning. And yeah, hence uh, we do this uh, presentation today so that uh, we can discuss um, all the matters. And yeah, let's uh, continue. So again, uh, it's a uh, will be quite relaxed presentation. So if you have any questions, etc., uh, please feel free to ask. First of all, I would like to welcome our new meetup hosts. Uh, welcome, Henrik. Welcome, Manri. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a few weeks ago, we made a call in the community that we are looking for more contributors who want to help us with online events. Um, and yeah, it's really important because community is not just about uh, submitting code. Uh, Jenkins community needs all kinds of contributions, including helping with organizing events, spreading the word. And uh, yeah, we had uh, multiple contributors who followed up. And today we have uh, uh, first meet up with uh, new participants. Okay, uh, Rick, Himandri, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah please. Okay, hello, I'm Rick, I'm, uh, I'm from China, and I, uh, I, I, I love Jenkins very much, not, not, not because the, the open source project, uh, because uh, the most important Jenkins community is very, Friendly for 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 everyone who who is interested in uh, open source, yeah. And I I when I try to promote Jenkins in China, actually, uh, the 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 history of Jenkins uh, is is a lot larger than my personal um, like a uh, worker in worker uh, in experience. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, Chinese people, in uh, are using Jenkins, but I, uh, I, I did something to uh, promote uh, it. Uh, like um, uh, uh, English is our second language, so I, I, uh, uh, I trans translate a lot of document and. Uh, uh, do some localization things uh, in China uh, to make it be uh, much easier for Chinese user. And uh, uh, as we know, the social media is, is also very important. So we have a WeChat uh, uh, group, uh, WeChat uh, account. Uh, it's, it's very similar with uh, Twitter. We have a lot of followers like uh, 15, uh, 15 thousand uh, followers of Jenkins uh, which had an account. And uh, the, the second uh, thing I want to mention is uh, Jenkins there. I wrote it in Golang um, because it, it will be uh, much easier for users who want to install it. Uh, as we know, we uh, the, the uh, Java always need a JVM, so it uh, might be not uh, uh, very handy uh, sometimes. Yeah, and uh, yes, I, I the third thing I want to introduce Kubesphere. Kubesphere is a open source uh, project. Jenkins is uh, the co engine of the DevOps module. Um, so. I, I, I think my colleague can have much more introduced about the groups well in case someone might be interested about this. So, uh, uh, Mr. Pan, uh, can you, uh, do you want to introduce groups well for us? Maybe a, a, few, a few minutes. Um, is this a bit up? And uh, maybe just uh, introduce uh, a brief introduce uh, what is Kubespera. Okay. Uh, okay. So, please let me 
briefly introduce what is CoSphere. Okay, CoSphere is a distributed operating system managing cloud native applications with Kubernetes as its kernel. And the CoSphere has uh, developed a CICD platform based on Jenkins. So uh, CoSphere provides a plug and play open architecture for third party application, seamless integration into its ecosystem. So CubeSphere, you can uh, you can position CubeSphere as a open source container platform to deploy and manage your cloud native applications. You know Helm charts or Docker containers or any uh, kind of cloud native applications. Cool. I I will have a presentation maybe in this month or next month to introduce how to use uh, Jenkins in CoSphere. Uh, basically, something like uh, how to use Jenkins in uh, Kubernetes. Okay, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so if you want to discuss more, uh, stay until the end of the meetup, we can yeah, discuss more CubeSphere. Mandre, would you like to introduce yeah. yourself? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, uh, my name is Dimadri and I'm from India. I love open source a lot. Uh, started my career learning from the open source, contributing to the open source a lot. And recently, uh, Jameen background of mine is in the development field as well. Uh, recently joined Jenkins and it's a very interesting open group of uh, open source contributors and uh, talented uh, people. and. Uh, I will love to contribute whatever way I can, as much as I can. So that's it from my side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And we also have uh, two um, uh, DevOps World Program Committee members today. So Victor and me. Victor, would you like to quickly? Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Victor Martinez. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been probably, as you already know, me in a few places. I've been a contributor for Jenga for a long period of time. Um, I'm happy this year to be in the program committee for review all the call for paper. So happy to do my best there. Uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much me. So I'll follow Victor for more information about cycling. Okay, and yeah, I'm uh, Jenkins uh, board member. I'm also acting events officer. Uh, so this role in the project uh, uh, who's responsible for organizing various events and coordinating them. Yeah, I'm a quite active uh, Jenkins contributor at the moment. So let's uh, continue to the main part. Yeah, we spent quite a long time today on the introductions, but uh, yeah, my plan is to actually do a really quick introduction to what is uh, DevOps world. Uh, and then we will discuss how call for papers work, and then we will just have a Q&A uh, where we will be able to answer any kinds of questions related to DevOps world agenda, community booth, or Whatever, whatever. Okay, if you have any questions during the presentation, please use Zoom Q&A. Everyone uh, has a button for that. And also after the meetup, um, after the main part, we will stop the recording and everyone will be able to ask any kinds of questions of the record. We will grant uh, voice permissions. And you, if you want to stay to talk, for example, about CFP, to discuss your particular ideas, or just to talk about CubeSphere, we can uh, stay here after the meetup for additional 30 minutes and uh, discuss all of that. Um, for uh, offline questions, we have um, a channel started uh, in the CDF workspace called DevOps World uh, Call for Papers. So if you want to, you can use uh, this chat to ask questions about the applications and you can uh, join this uh, Slack workspace by following the guidelines here. So maybe somebody from panelists could uh, share a link to this presentation so that uh, you can just open that and follow all the links. And yeah, thanks to the Continuous Delivery Foundation and CloudBees for sponsoring the Meetup platform and for sponsoring Meetups because yeah, without them it would be quite different, difficult to organize all of that. Okay, uh, let's uh, start uh, from the conference. Um, yeah, let us... Okay. So yeah, let's uh, continue. Um, so yeah, what is DevOps world? 
Actually, this conf conference has started in 2011. It started as Jenkins User Conference. It was firstly a small event where there were around 100 participants, and then the conference grew. And for example, uh, last year we had 25,000 registrations and more than 3,000 participants on the conference. Um, it's a four online event, and the most recent uh, offline event in San Francisco was also about 3,000 participants. So you may have heard about this event as Jenkins World um, also, and but uh, it evolved and now it focuses on all the areas related to DevOps as a culture, as tooling ecosystem. It also covers topics like leadership. It invites a lot of practitioners to take their stories. And there is also a community representation. So all open source projects are welcome at DevOps World, whether they're a member of the Continuous Delivery Foundation or not. So yeah, this is a quite big community event. Um, and, but we still have quite strong Jenkins representation there. Um, and uh, Jenkins is still considers it as a major community event. And let's talk why. So firstly, Jenkins is represented at keynotes. Um, yeah, we use uh, this event to do major announcements when feasible. Uh, we also do that to talk about the direction for the project uh, and key initiatives happening there. So here, for example, you can see KK, founder of Jenkins, talking about 15 years of Jenkins. We celebrated, I guess, two years ago. So yeah, uh, and we use conferences for that. Uh, also, yeah, there is. A lot of Jenkins talks. Um, some, so Jenkins agenda is about 20 to 30 percent of uh, DevOps world agenda at the moment. So it's about dozens of talks. Uh, there are many key contributors presenting. For example, here you can see Mark Wade. He's the author of the Git plugin, uh, leader of the platform Seek. And he's Liam Newman, uh, who is one of major contributors to the Jenkins pipeline ecosystem. And from what I can see, I can see Liam is doing whatever presentation about Jenkins pipeline. Um, and yeah, again, you can uh, meet any contributors and we actually welcome all kinds of talks, including uh, hardcore talks uh, by developers. Like, for example, I did a presentation about the remote internals, it's communication layer in Jenkins. But also, also newcomer talks are welcome so that if you want to present a particular feature or show your story about how you use Jenkins, you can also participate in this event. Um, then. Uh, it's not about talks. We also have a community booth, and uh, this community booth is actually a center where we have a community gathering and uh, hanging out. So if you have ever participated in an event like FOSDEM or SCALE, uh, community booth is basically our representation of community at uh, DevOps World. There are always uh, contributors uh, hanging out there from different companies, from different projects. Um, and we also use them to organize various live demos. So for example, here you can see Abude Sharma. Uh, he's uh, one of uh, GSOC 2019 students. He was working on job strategy performance improvements. And yeah, he, or as many other students, visited DevOps World to present. And he's also a, a GSOC team, but uh, at another conference in the United States, this one in, in Lisbon, and yeah. We also organize Ask the Experts booth, so any Jenkins user can come and ask questions from expert uh, contributors um, and get the answers. So we usually have a really high traffic in the community booth, and yeah, it's not just about stickers. At online events, we also have a booth. Another thing we have at uh, DevOps World and the Jenkins World tradition is Contributor Summit. So what it means, it's a full day event where we talk about Jenkins, as contributors, uh, advanced users are also uh, invited to participate, especially if they're interested in contributing to the project. But the main goal is to talk about Jenkins' future um, and uh, key initiatives. So that are basically it's organized as a conference with uh, several tracks. For example, there we talked about uh, things like the joining Continuous Delivery Foundation, uh, pluggable storage for Jenkins, uh, or when Jenkins X started again, we had a huge brainstorming about how we would like to see Jenkins as a cloud native application. So uh, it was one of the initial discussions for Jenkins X. And again, it's on conference. So the agenda depends on what actually happens. Uh, also, um, yeah, um, again, another photo from Contributor Simon. So no, we are not just celebrate there. We actually have a lot of talks. Um, we also used to run uh, community awards at um, uh, DevOps World. 
So here you can see Evelina Wilkos, currently Jenkins Governance Board member and a major contributor to the configuration of Scott plugin. So um, yeah, currently uh, community awards uh, will be happening at the CDCon. So it's another conference scheduled for June 25th. And uh, the line for nominations is actually this week, Friday. So if you want to nominate someone, uh, there is still opportunity. And yep, but yeah, there will be no community awards at uh, DevOps World this year, at least in the current plan. And we also have a lot of community bonding events, including going to the bar uh, after the event, uh, hanging somewhere in the hotel, uh, well, uh, when the event person uh, is in person or just uh, staying at various happy hours, etc. if the event uh, is remote. And yeah, when uh, we had 15 years of Jenkins, we also had uh, multiple kicks at conferences, again, in the community booth. It was a fun time. Yeah, and last but not least, we also organized hackathons. Uh, during the conference. So it's, let's say, limited event. Uh, we invite something like 20 to 30 uh, contributors uh, from different area to work together and uh, uh, to just uh, hug particular projects. For example, there we worked on Java 11 support. We also worked on uh, new security scanning engines. Uh, Uli Hafner uh, created significant parts of the new one SNG plugin together with other contributors during this hackathon. So yeah, again, it's a community event uh, which you can join. And now since it's online, I'm not sure whether we will be organizing that to be seen. Okay, so this is a community agenda. And again, it's not just about uh, um, uh, talks. There are many other things to do. Uh, do we have any questions so far? No, no questions so far. Okay, so if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to use Kone. And yeah, now we will go to real content. And the, yeah, the real content is actually about call for papers. Um, and yeah, there will be less photos this, uh, in this part. So yeah, first of all, yeah, uh, this year the conference will happen in, uh, in September from 28th to 30th. There might be also satellite events before and after the conference. It's yet to be decided. Um, this conference will be absolutely free to participate, except uh, particular workshops. Uh, but yeah, the main uh, conference, including call tracks, community track, etc., it's uh, available. You, uh, the registration is yet to be published, uh, but yeah, it will be available. And the conference is fully virtual, so it will happen uh, remotely. Again, time zones, etc., to be different, determined how it will happen. The landing site for the event is here, DevOps World. So yeah, basically you can explore all the information here and you can sign up for notifications when the registration opens, which is something good thing to do for me. Okay, um, so uh, what else? Uh, yeah, the current plan, again, um, it's yet to be announced. Uh, we will have uh, two days of conference with main tracks and there are multiple tracks uh, to be aware about. So the first, first is community track. It's fully focused on uh, open source projects uh, and on open source communities, including how to build to the DevOps com community or just present in particular areas. Uh, there will be a practitioner track, which is uh, focused uh, uh, on basically user stories. And again, uh, Jenkins is historically represented there quite well. There will be the continuous delivery foundation track. Uh, basically, it's uh, another set of community track uh, where uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation focuses uh, on uh, its member projects, uh, special interest groups, and also all open source projects are invited. So historically, there are also um, uh, some representation of CDF uh, member companies, and yeah, but still uh, this is uh, quite a good um, agenda. On day zero, uh, there will be workshops. Maybe there will be something else. Uh, yeah, all of that is to be decided. And for Contributor Summit, uh, we tentatively discussed uh, doing it after the event on uh, October 1st. Uh, so it won't collide with the main agenda, but uh, we want to do it this time after the event, because in this case, we will be able to meet, discuss recent development, presentation, share ideas we got during the conference. And it seems to be a better format than we used to do before, because before we historically were doing it in parallel with workshops. Um, and yeah, this, uh, yeah, the plan is a bit different. Again, it's all to be announced. 
Okay, what else uh, do we have confirmed? So we will have two community workshops on September 28th. One uh, workshop will be related to contribute uh, to the Jenkins and onboarding. Another one will be likely related to something about Jenkins pipeline. Then yeah, community track, uh, other tracks. Keynote is to be decided, uh, but yeah, likely they will be keynote by the Continuous Delivery Foundation and they will be uh, Jenkins representation there. So if you have any major announcements to make, we will do this opportunity. And uh, also, um, yeah, Expo Hall, it will likely happen. And Contributor Summit, it will likely happen. So it's again to be decided. And for CDCon, again, June 25th, another conference. And again, everyone is welcome. Uh, the registration is already open. Okay. So for community track, uh, yeah, there is some information from Alisa, but basically what I discussed, we talk about open source projects, uh, various tooling, methodologies, again, stories from end users, if uh, they get submitted to this track or to practitioner track, as a program committee, we'll be load balancing them uh, because yeah, these uh, tracks are more or less fictional at the moment. We will also talk about use cases. Uh, this year, there will be significant focus on security and compliance uh, because yeah, many CDF project members uh, actually prioritize security this year, including Jenkins. So likely there will be more representation for security topics in software delivery than usual. Um, okay, if you consider speaking about Jenkins, what you can present, actually anything related to Jenkins. Uh, so it might be about various integrations, about your success stories. If you're a Jenkins contributor, you can talk about new features, show some live demos. You can also show your experience, for example, about developer and pipeline libraries, how you deliver these pipeline libraries, how you deliver your projects with Jenkins. And uh, if you want to share your insights about how the project evolves, uh, what you would like to see, all of that can be submitted. Uh, so, yeah, the expectation, especially for the community track, if you talk about Jenkins, then, uh, yeah, then it should be about the Jenkins. So, pure marketing talks are not exactly welcome at the conference. Uh, though, for technical talks, again, you can do whatever you want. And, uh, um, yeah, it's not about Jenkins. So, if you work on other projects like Coopsphere, Tecton, uh, Jenkins X, Spinnaker, et cetera, you are also welcome to submit your applications. And uh, we, as a program committee, will be balancing the agenda uh, so that there will be a representation for uh, white uh, technology area. So, Victor, uh, Rick, would you like to add something? As, uh, well, as experienced DevOps world participants and the program committee members. Sure. Um, for me, uh, I done the two. I've been in the two hat as giving a talk and also doing the the review of the talks. So I just encourage people to get out of the comfort zone and talk about what they do, how they use. It's always interesting to see other people's way of working with Jenkins and what other thing they've been building, uh, because the way they can teach us what are the troubleshoot or the probably they try to solve with Jenkins or what are the experience they got using it, it will help others to understand how they can use that as well. So I really encourage people to use that. From the review point of view, um, this is always a trick, like you might be interesting to talk about something, uh, but it's also interesting, like you might provide different perspective for the same talk. So I also encourage you to don't just submit one call for paper, you can submit two or three. Talk, talking about similar, but with some minor differences, because that's the way you might have more chances to be accepted from the point of view of the talk. That's for me the true hint. Would you like to add something? Uh, I, I didn't have something. Uh, yeah, okay. no worries. Uh, I'm not sure if Andre, have you uh, participated in, in DevOps world before? Uh, no. Okay, so looking forward to meet you this September. Then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay. Yeah, so just uh, to show you a few tips, and again, I messed up um, the animation on this slide. 
So yeah, there are some uh, events happening in Jenkins and there are uh, various technologies. So for example, pipeline as code, configuration as code, so there are new plugins and integrations happening here and there. There is more than packaging being introduced, for example, Jenkins for Docker, for Kubernetes, there are various separator projects. Um, also, uh, there is the uh, execution for cloud like AWS, Google Cloud, Asia. And uh, again, if you present a DevOps world, uh, if you want to share something, the main objective is to actually communicate information to users and uh, to provide something uh, they could adopt and could follow up on. So if you talk about the Jenkins, how it could be used in a modern way, uh, how this use of existing techno recent technologies is definitely something uh, interesting for a big audience. You can also take various part specific topics, but again, uh, narrow topics, um, it's harder to get audience for them. And uh, but at the same time, you can get uh, less participants, but uh, more interested in particular topic. Uh, so, yeah, there are many areas uh, are welcome. And uh, if you're interested, um, there is a Jenkins roadmap published here. And this roadmap actually needs some update. There are discussions in the developer mailing list, but you can see that uh, there are multiple areas here, including um, current preview features, uh, ongoing projects, and recently re uh, released events. So it could be one of uh, sorts of ideas for you if you want to explore something and present a DevOps world. Um, so it's just a hint. Again, you're not limited to what's listed here, not in any means. One particular area I would like to highlight is in interoperability with other projects. Uh, because yeah, it includes tool integrations, it also includes integration with other projects. For example, um, a few days ago, we had an announcement uh, for um, uh, Tikton client plugin for Jenkins 1.0 release. Uh, you can also see examples here, for example, how to reuse Tikton and Jenkins X from Jenkins. So such interoperability topics become more and more popular in these years. So if you want uh, to talk about how you integrate Jenkins with other tools in the software delivery pipeline, then yeah, it could be a good opportunity. And another good opportunity is, of course, everything security related, because again, uh, there are two parts. First, how you create secure Jenkins if you're a contributor, how you deliver uh, components, and if you're a user, how you secure your own uh, products with Jenkins. So how you secure your delivery pipelines, how you verify your uh, products, uh, um, et cetera. And all these talks could be very interesting to the audience. So you can uh, take a look at that. Okay. Any comments before we move on? No. Yeah. yeah, we'll click through this animation as well. Okay, call for papers. Uh, some key dates, uh, so the call for papers closes uh, in a bit more than two weeks on May 20th. So we highly encourage everyone to submit the applications by this date. Um, and yeah, a few tips. So firstly, uh, yeah, when you make an application, just be concise, uh, stay with uh, key points because when uh, reviewers review the applications, uh, last year we got uh, almost 500 proposals to the community track, if I recall correctly. So basically it's competitive application and uh, yeah, program committee and reviewers have limited time to process them. So they start from basically t looking at your elevator pitch and uh, the abstract. Uh, they do initial filtering, then they start uh, deep diving. Uh, but yeah, if you want to be selected, it's important to represent the idea of the talk and to show what uh, would be the takeaways for the main audience in your abstract. And uh, yeah, it's important thing. So if you create a better abstract, it's quite Probable that nobody will go, for example, to the GitHub link you attach to deeply investigate your project and try it out and say that it's cool. Uh, we would be happy to do that, but we have a very limited time uh, to process the applications. Um, also, uh, yeah, focus on users and on your target audience. 
so whatever is your target audience, it might be any Jenkins user, it may be just a particular set of users and contributors, but when you work on proposal, just think about what is your target audience and uh, create uh, basically talk uh, for them. So you do not have to, for example, if you talk about Canadian uh, um, delivery with Kubernetes, uh, you can just highlight Kubernetes and focus on what are the details. You don't want, you don't need to provide introduction about what is Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, there are other talks. There might be references for that, unless you want to do exactly the introductory talk, which can be also an option. So just think about that. Uh, complexity is fine. And we can, as a program committee, we are responsible to somehow balance these talks. It's always um, an interesting challenge, but we will do our best to do that. Um, so there are also news about uh, speaker training. So this year, CloudBees uh, will be offering uh, training sessions for speakers. Uh, this is the first year when it happens. Um, the details are to be announced, uh, but yeah, the fact that it will happen. So if you want to participate in such trainings as a speaker, you will be eligible to. And yeah, and the one thing, uh, yeah, I mentioned the program committee multiple times. So currently the program committee is still being uh, finalized. We have several contributors who have already agreed to be a part. So Victor and me, also we have Alex Yol, Victor Parsik, uh, Alisa Tonk and Carlos Sanchez. Likely there will be more contributors who join um, uh, before the end of the call for papers. So this is uh, the committee of contributors who will be reviewing the proposals for the community tracks. For other tracks, there will be rather other reviewer teams. Um, but yeah, for community tracks, we specifically focus on uh, the, the tracks, the applications being reviewed by the community. And uh, yeah, hence we invite contributors to participate. Any questions so far? Yeah, there is a question from Vikas. Okay. So uh, he is asking that to work on Jenkins add-ons development, do we need our own setup or some cloud setup can be given from group? I suggest discussing it after the presentation because it's not strictly related to the subject of the event, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to answer this question and share the links. Okay. Yeah. okay. But yeah, thanks for the question. So we will definitely answer that. Uh, okay, so if you have um, any questions, so we had one session um, last week, we have a session today, yeah, you can see that uh, this slide hasn't been, hasn't been updated, sorry about that, and as I mentioned in the beginning, there is a Slack channel on the CDF workspace, which uh, you can use uh, to join and ask any questions, so you just navigate to this uh, page, uh, it's on uh, Jenkins community website. And here you can follow the link, uh, how to join the CDF Slack, how to automatically request the invite and join uh, this channel. And once you join, you can ask any questions in the chat. We have another question from Mike, how to get speaker training? Uh, so there will be communications after you get a notification of acceptance. Uh, so, Right now, I don't know what will be the details. So I know that CloudBees is arranging that, uh, but yeah, all the details will be communicated, uh, I guess, in June or in July. So, and yeah, if you want to practice presenting, uh, yeah, what I can offer, we have a Jenkins Online Meetup. Uh, and there, for example, if you want to present at this Meetup, um, you can uh, go to this page and there is, uh, speaking uh, section. So you can uh, follow this guide if you want to apply to a Jenkins online meetup and present again anything about Jenkins. And for speakers, what we also offer, we provide uh, reviews of uh, the application, of abstract, of uh, slide decks when they want. We also do rehearsals before the meetup, again, if the speakers are interested to. So if you want uh, to practice uh, it a bit, uh, you can uh, join us for Jenkins Online Meetup and we will be happy to help. So it's a good opportunity. And yeah, be sure that it's yeah, something you can use as a practice uh, uh, ground. 
So is that possible to speak, uh, to talk the same topic uh, with, uh, for, uh, between the online meetup meet meet and the DevOps world? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, so I cannot say yes or no, because it really depends on the agenda. At the oh, same time, yeah, if there is already a public uh, recording of the talk in the Jenkins community, then yeah, let's say it will be less interesting uh, than having a new talk, because uh, having a new talk is giving an opportunity to somebody else to present their story and to make this story visible. So we commonly, so sometimes uh, there are uh, talks being repeated, but again, uh, since everything is online these days, there is no particular point in repeating the same talk again in the same form. So you can uh, submit the same talk, it might be accepted, uh, but yes, program committee, I think that we will be focusing on giving opportunity to more speakers and presenters. Uh, I guess the online meetup is just a good place to practice. Yeah, that's right. So it's not the best place to practice the same talk. Uh, that's for sure. But for example, uh, if you want to practice the talk, you can, uh, every one of us works for a company. And for example, you can, could do an internal meetup and present the same talk. Uh, it could be a good opportunity to get some feedback. Also, there are other meetup uh, groups, etc. Yeah, you can apply there. Uh, well, uh, actually, a good uh, practice is to let uh, meet, uh, organizers of a conference know when you submit to multiple conferences, so that uh, they again uh, can balance the agenda. Um, but yeah, in particular cases, it's possible to do presentations. Um, especially in countries where offline meetups are allowed at the moment, uh, yeah, you can also consider doing offline meetups. In the Jenkins community, we don't uh, encourage offline meetups at the moment, um, but yeah, other communities are doing them. Okay. Any more questions about that? And okay, some takeaways um, before, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat or in q &A, we will still answer them. So key takeaways. Firstly, uh, at uh, DevOps World, we have a really strong community agenda. This, is, this agenda isn't really related to Jenkins, but uh, Jenkins is still heavily represented there and we invite uh, talks about Jenkins integrations with other tools, uh, various community use cases, developer use cases, um, uh, yeah, and basically it can be a practitioner discussion or it can be discussion about, uh, let's say, uh, digital transformation in your company. So yeah, the areas of topics is quite wide. And the yeah, DevOps world, can, uh, I'm not sure how many tracks there will be finally this year, maybe something like eight or so, so this is a good opportunity. Um, okay, um, then, uh, yeah, if you want to apply, you don't have to be a Jenkins expert. Uh, there is a lot of opportunities for practitioner talks, for newcomer talks, etc., and you can do that. Also, we will try to get some, give some opportunity for presenting at the Jenkins Contributor Summit. And even if your talk doesn't get accepted, uh, for example, you can do this talk at the Jenkins Online Meetup. So again, if you're interested to present uh, in presenting in Jenkins community, there are many ways to present, not just the DevOps world. And we can work on that. So we encourage you to submit the applications. The deadline is May 20th, so there is a bit more than one week left. I'm not sure whether the deadline will be moved this year. Uh, I recommend to not expect that and to submit earlier. And yeah, to anyone, yeah, thanks for your time. And uh, again, we welcome all the applications and we'll be happy to review them. If you have any questions, uh, we have uh, this CDF Slack channel. Uh, the entire program committee is there. And uh, yeah, well, we also have limited availability, but we will do our best to answer any questions you have in this Slack room. 
So, any other questions? Um, I have uh, a few references actually. So, in the uh, last slide, you can see a link to DevOps World, to Advocacy and Outreach Seek. It's actually uh, another group which uh, helps to organize events. It says if you want to present outside of DevOps World, then uh, there is a Slack channel for any kinds of QA. And yeah, there are also recordings of previous sessions. You can find them on YouTube. Um, and for 2020, there is uh, this site. So yeah, if you are looking for some inspiration for experience about uh, how to present and what to present, uh, go to this event. 2020 was also a virtual event. So the experience of the format is quite close to what we will be doing for 2021. And you can see that uh, there is a lot of Jenkins uh, topics there, uh, again, of various uh, complexity of various uh, angle. So take a look and you can find something interesting. And I believe that Victor presented uh, last autumn, right? So maybe you could, uh, yeah, the search here is not exactly the best thing, uh, but yeah. Uh, you can find uh, Victor's talk. You can also uh, find my talk, but yeah, please don't watch that. Uh, but yeah, Victor's talk was really good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, do you have any other questions? One question is about a uh, uh, Meetup host. Uh, and we ask uh, if want to host the Meetup in Toronto, what roadmap you can follow? Okay. Uh, so yeah, just to provide you some more tips, uh, how we organize that. So in the Jenkins project, uh, there is a sub project related to meetups called uh, uh, CICD and Jenkins array meetups. So we originally started a series of Jenkins array meetups around the world. Uh, we had around 80 active uh, meetups at once. Uh, at some point. Then there are also CICD meetups, which are basically meetups under the umbrella of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. So currently Jenkins meetups are welcome to rename to CICD meetups and other CICD meetups are welcome to join. Um, and yeah, we, together with uh, the uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation, have a platform uh, which is based on meetup.com. So many of you registered uh, using meetup.com link. And uh, yeah, you can also get the list of meetups by just following uh, to our pro account. So it's uh, meetup.com pro CICD CDF. And there you can see currently active meetups or at least currently registered meetups because yeah, with coronavirus, uh, the most of these meetups are not actually active at the moment. Uh, so here, for example, let's go to Toronto. I'm not sure whether we have a registered meetup at the moment. And we have a meetup which is called uh, Toronto Jenkins Area Meetup. So I'm just uh, following the question. It's an example. I don't know exactly what's the state. So last meetup, uh, I mean, real meetup was organized uh, before the coronavirus. Uh, there is a good assumption that uh, this meetup is rather on hold at the moment. So there are multiple ways. Firstly, you can see the list of organizers here. And the list of organizers, let's see who is here. So uh, continues Delivery Foundation, then uh, Scholar and Maxwell, uh, they were managers for, of the Jenkins online, uh, of the Jenkins Meetups program uh, when it was managed by CloudBees. Uh, and there are also local organizers, so Kevin and Greg. Um, I don't know them personally, uh, but yeah, this could be your points of contact. So first of the things, if you want to organize a meetup, again, it can be Toronto online meetup uh, or whatever. We do not encourage face-to-face uh, uh, -face meetups at the moment. Uh, but uh, anyway, you can reach the organizers and say that, hey, I would like to speak uh, about Jenkins. I would like to organize meetup and let's do something. Then uh, if they're available, if they're interested, uh, you can just collaborate on organizing. If they're not available, if they have already moved on uh, to something else, then we can uh, transition this meetup to you. If you want to become a new organizer, because again, these meetups are sponsored by the Continuous Delivery Foundation. And uh, yeah, I cannot provide the exact numbers, but let's say that uh, this meetup.com program is quite expensive. 
and we are interested uh, to actually get uh, the most of that in terms of active communities and cities. Okay, does it answer the question? Another question from Mike, uh, need to attach the detail PPT or just uh, the outline uh, will be okay to sum submit the topic? Okay, so definitely you don't have to attach the slides. I, I'm not sure what is uh, the exact uh, application form for now. Uh, I'm guilty, I still haven't uh, submitted my application. Uh, uh, yeah, I tried it uh, once just uh, to test, but you submit the uh, abstract and some details. So let's uh, try to see it together. So we are using Submittable as a platform. Uh, so and key, you can see that uh, there is some description, etc. Basically what we discussed, you can also create your account. Let's see whether I can do that quickly. Okay. Yeah, I'll change it anyway. Please don't submit talks on my behalf if you watch the recording. So yeah, yeah. so for example, uh, I have no idea, okay. something like that. So here we get uh, the call for paper uh, platform. And then what we do is, yeah, here's uh, the form we need to submit. Yeah, please be aware about code of conduct, etc. but code of conduct for there is, please be nice, uh, yeah. And here you submit session name, you provide the abstract. So basically this is a key field and it looks like user experience is gonna be great for this field. Uh, but yeah, probably it supports markdown, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, you can submit here, you can see the limit, 60, 600 characters. So it's not an extended abstract, it's just a few paragraphs of the description. Then you define a technical level, a target audience. Again, this target audience on the white level. For you, you can define a more narrow audience if you want. And yeah, discussion about whether you presented this topic. Yes, no, session type. So you can see that uh, currently uh, the sessions are going to be quite short again to accommodate big agenda and to respond to our experience from the previous events when the big talks are not really well followed because it's hard to stay focused uh, uh, during the big online talks. So we focus on short ones. Um, and yeah, basically this is uh, the options we have and also tracks uh, which are currently listed. So when you apply again, you define uh, to which track you submit. But uh, yeah, this track is not something uh, you sign with your blood because the program committee can uh, then uh, make adjustments if needed. And yeah, also topic category, industry focus. Uh, so since the event is organized by CloudBees, uh, you also invited to list uh, projects uh, your products you're using from CloudBees, but yeah, if you're using just Jenkins, as well, you can see uh, non-applicable, and then uh, you can talk about use cases specifically. Then speaker info. Mm, uh, yes, again, speaker training. So that was a question. If you're interested, you say yes, and then uh, uh, somebody will contact you. Uh, if you want to get Schwag, of course, say yes there. And yeah, then shipping address if you need that. Uh, and yeah, various information, bio, headshot. Well, yeah, the form is quite long. Uh, but yeah, I think that it's quite straightforward. You just uh, fill in the fields and then uh, submit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, once you submit, uh, then uh, the program committee will receive the application. Uh, it will be a partially blind review. So what it means, we don't know um, uh, the name of the submitter, but if you say that I'm a leader, let's say of Coopsphere project in your application, then yeah, it won't be that anonymous. Um, so yeah, it's up to you, but yeah, generally we try to do balanced reviews and that's why we have many community members representing different companies and different industries so that we can uh, build a uh, more or less diverse uh, track. Okay. So 
Any other questions? Yeah, there is another question from Bhaiva. Uh, he's saying that what is the difference between show and tail and panel? Okay. So, okay, it's here. So, breakout session is basically a common presentation. Uh, you do the talk, then you do QA. Um, technology show and tell it's a short demo. So basically, let's say you turn on Jenkins and show whatever particular feature or just show how is your pipeline implemented. Lightning talk, uh, yeah, it's the same as breakout session, by sh but shorter. It's 15 minutes. So yeah, usually the difference is high because breakout sessions is something like 45 minutes, lightning talks 10 minutes. But yeah, this year it's 20, uh, this time it's 25 and 15. So uh, the difference is not that high. Ask me anything is basically q &A. So you don't have slides, but you just say that, okay, I'm a Jenkins core maintainer. I have expertise uh, there, ask me anything. Or Victor Martinez can do the same, for example, about Elastic together with the team. So they could apply and say that whatever Elastic tools in continuous delivery, let's talk and ask us. So it could be uh, AMA session. Panel is rather a moderated discussion, so there are multiple contributors uh, participating, and uh, there is discussion uh, moderated by someone on particular topic. So, for example, we could do panel discussion, let's say, future of Jenkins together with Jenkins governance board members, or something like that. Again, I'm just making up things, though it might happen. Um, and yeah, it, uh, it's a panel session. And workshop is just uh, several hours events where you uh, do presentation and the way you also show people how to do something. Again, we would like to have a free workshop for contributing to Jenkins and a free workshop for something about Jenkins pipeline, uh, but it's yet to be announced. Okay. Uh, Victor, Rick, would you like to add something? Nothing from me. Yeah, sorry, I'm talking too much today. Uh, yeah. No, there's think... nothing to highlight in my end. There was only one more question that someone was asking about uh, the to work on Jenkins add-ons development. I don't remember if we answered this question, but if the question was: Do we need our own setup, or some cloud setup can be given from group? Okay. Yeah, let's uh, answer that. So for Jenkins development, we have documentation. So if you go to the Jenkins IO website, I'm just going to the root. So here you can see that uh, there is documentation page and there is uh, user guide, solution pages, tutorials, and developer guide. So if you want to participate, you click on the developer guide and there are tutorials which show how to get started. There is also reference documentation for details, various information for advanced developers like uh, index of extension points because yeah, Jenkins is built all around extension points. It's automation framework. So there are zillions of them, uh, but yeah, this advanced documentation. But you're, if you really want to get started, yeah, there is tutorial uh, which shows how to create uh, a simple uh, plugin in a few steps using standard tools. So for developing Jenkins plugins, uh, there are multiple uh, stacks available. We usually recommend um, Java plus Maven or plus Gradle. For Maven and Gradle, we provide our parent forms. And here you can just follow these steps uh, in order to set up your environment. Uh, so it's basically a step by step guide. Install GDK, install Maven, uh, set up your environment, uh, NetBeans, Intelligent ID, Eclipse, and then going step by step, you create a simple plugin. I believe it's something like Hello World plugin with some uh, uh, configuration, etc. And after that, yeah, so here, for example, yeah, you get a say Hello World form parameter by using this plugin. And uh, you follow this guide to create your first plugin. Then um, you can uh, ref go to the reference documentation. It, yeah, you can see that the list is a bit longer. And this list covers various topics including, for example, how to develop uh, uh, um, plugins, for example, how to handle security, how to handle requests uh, in Jenkins framework, how to develop web UI, including various configuration form, how to localize your plugins if needed. 
then uh, the general guidelines about uh, how everything works. Again, uh, all this uh, is living documentation maintained by contributors. So if you see any issues, you can just report them. So for example, on any page, you can see report a problem button. So if you see something missing, something confusing, I clicked this button and I've got a new issue dialog just on GitHub uh, with link to the page and you are welcome to just uh, provide some context and then it will be trashed uh, by the uh, documentation special interest group and uh, maybe they will be contributor who will adjust that. And if you want to improve this page, again, you click improve. And here you enter, uh, well, in editor on GitHub and you can just write it. So this particular page is not fun because it uses Haml. So basically it's auto-generated. Uh, but for example, some pages, uh, let's say like, let's say plugin site. This is the site we use uh, for hosting and producing the plugins. You can like, improve this page and you get uh, this page in a uh, GitHub editor. And here, for example, you can just click preview and see the current contact uh, because it's ASCII doc. You use documentation as code for the entire website and for the most of for other components and Jenkins. So follow these guidelines if you have any questions. Um, so there is another page called Jenkins IO Participate. It's basically landing for contributors. And here there is code uh, section, which provides some links uh, references for uh, those who want to start developing plugins or want to contribute to existing plugins. You can follow these guidelines and if needed, uh, there is also a, a channel for newcomer contributors. So it's actually called, it's called newcomer contributors. You can join this channel and basically ask literally any question about anything related to Jenkins development. And then we either, will either answer this question or route you to the proper channels. Because yeah, channels in Jenkins might be a bit confusing at the moment. We have so many chats, so many mailing keys because of special interest groups, etc. But as a newcomer contributor, just use this channel as an entry point and we will be happy to help you. So there is another question from Dikash. Uh, he is asking that if uh, my plugin works in my Jenkins, it will be published by Jenkins group if it is visible? Uh, okay, so um, the answer is a bit more complicated. Uh, so we, yeah, we have plugin index. So basically, we list uh, where we list uh, the most of Jenkins plugins, which are open source ones. Um, we provide our own update centers. So when you go to Jenkins, click install plugins. If you haven't reconfigured your instance, then you will be using the default update center uh, hosted by the Jenkins community. You can also use company internal update centers, etc. If you need, there are options for that. Uh, but yeah, by default, you use the Jenkins one. And if you want to host the plugin there, there is also reference documentation and there is information about uh, publishing plugins, which provides information uh, how to actually get uh, the things hosted, uh, how to configure this plugin, how to submit the application, and you can uh, go just to, through this guideline in order to get the information. So yeah, we are about uh, reworking that because right now it's a bit complicated. Uh, to find these common questions um, and yeah, again, any feedback and contributions to the documentations are welcome. But, yeah, we try to improve the documentation over time. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the links. Okay, anything else we would like to discuss today? If not, uh, I will start, stop the recording and we can just uh, do um, whatever free discussion of the record. So thanks to everyone who participated in the meetup and uh, yeah, thanks for any questions. Uh, looking forward to meet you at DevOps World or in the community channels. And if you have any questions, again, we have a Slack channel and uh, please follow up uh, asynchronously. So thanks all and stay online if you want uh, to continue the discussion.